Today, I'm gonna give another crack at turning this into this. Making your own sculpt mold a faster, better way. Is it worth it? Next on Model Railroading with Bill Masters. Uh, here it is, uh, the, the diorama that I made um, using the sculptor mold. It has had about three days to dry. While I am happy with the texture and the, the pliability of it, I'm not happy with the way it held the paint. Um, I think I can correct that. I painted this completely identical to the same way that I painted this. And you can see quite a difference there. I didn't want to change my method for a different kind of sculpt mold. Uh, I wanted to, to keep it consistent. If I'm making my own sculpt mold, it has to be just as good as the stuff that I buy. So, I'm gonna try something a little bit different today. I'm gonna try Adjusting the mixture a little bit. I'm gonna do two parts of the fluff one part of the plaster of Paris I think the problem with the way it's holding the paint is that really the surface is mostly paper uh, As opposed to the sculptor mold that I buy I believe is more plaster of Paris than it is paper I also want to try something else as well. I think I believe that I can speed up the process by skipping a few steps. I'm gonna make it, you know, kind of on demand as I need it. I'm gonna just blend what I need instead of putting it through the dehydrator. I'm gonna just wring it out as much as I can and then I'm gonna try to fluff it up a little bit, this time in the blender. And then I will take it right out of the blender and put it into the mixing bowl and add the plaster of Paris and mix it on up and apply it to my mountain. I think that that's gonna work. Uh, let's give it a try. All right, I've got my mixture here. Uh, same as before, I haven't uh, done any more up. This is cardboard, you got your toilet paper, you got your shredded paper. Uh, your whole punch uh, paper. There's some napkins in there. Some, you know, that's, uh, and there's a, a little bit less of the uh, eggshell kind of uh, carbs. I used most of that last time. So let's put a little bit in there. Add the water. I need to add the water because this will not blend dry. Here we go. So I blended that for 60 seconds. Start working all that water out of there. Let's set that aside and do the rest. All right, I'm kind of loosen this up a little bit. Okay. All right, back into the blender. Uh, this time we're not going to add water. We're just going to blend it up a little bit further here. Uh, um, I, I want to measure them out in equal two ounce parts. All right, so for this demonstration, I wanted to do two to one to the fluff, one of the plaster of Paris. All right, let's mix this up. I want to do all of it. First of all, let's uh, just kind of distribute that around a little bit. Okay. 
Now let's see how the paint takes to this one. I'm gonna apply it to a makeshift uh, mountain here, just like I did last time. I've got more of the plaster of Paris this time. I think that was solving my problem. If it takes more than one part plaster of Paris to two parts of the fluff, I'm gonna call it. I'm not gonna put equal parts plaster of Paris and equal part fluff because that just gets too, the, the, the money savings I just don't think is there for all the work. I mean, yeah, you're still saving a little money, but for all the work you have to do, I don't think it's worth it. Uh, we'll see. With more plaster in there, it, it smooths out a little better. I'm gonna let this dry for a little while, and then I'll paint it. It's about 12 hours later, and this has dried pretty well. It's a little bit damp. I am gonna start painting it. Now, judging from last time, I'm gonna add just a tad bit of paint to each of my colors here. Goes the first coat. Still got a little bit of black and gray, black on the brush. That's fine. Let's do a final grade here. As far as colors go, it looks like it held the paint better. This is from the previous video, and this is after I changed the recipe a little bit. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but it is a little bit sharper as far as texture goes. The sculpt mold that I made, everything seems to you know be a little bit flatter, kind of not defined edges on the rocks. Uh, you can see that clearly on the sculpted mold that I bought versus the sculpted mold that I made. Yeah, there's still a little bit of difference. Would I use this stuff in a pinch? Uh, if I was doing a small area, I might. Would I do an entire mountain? For large projects, I think I would still stick with the sculpted mold that I buy. But in a pinch, yes, I would probably use this mixture in a very small area. You know, like under a bridge. Something that's not a focal area, maybe far in the back, uh, back sides of the layout where you can't really see it. It becomes a better product the more plaster or parish you add to it. Doing a two parts fluff, one part plaster or Paris. That's about the threshold that I'm willing to try. I think if you did one, one part fluff, one part plaster or Paris, you'd have a perfect product. But that to me makes it not cost effective. So that's my final. I'm happy with the uh, two part to one part recipe and uh, a little bit darker paints. Letting the sculpting will dry a little bit before I paint it. It's good for small areas in the back, not for focal points. For focal points, you're gonna wanna use the higher quality store-bought sculpting mold. That's my opinion and I'm sticking to it. All right, hope you enjoyed this. On to the next video.